The Torah scroll is the foundational text of Jewish tradition. We honor these texts by chanting them every week in the synagogue. And every week we actually go deeply into the meaning of the stories. But the Torah is a living document. And every generation looks at the Torah from the lens of their own environments and experiences and history and traditions. In addition to its ritual function as a text, the dressing and adorning of the Torah is a ritual unto itself, replete with an array of striking objects. These include a Torah binder that holds the two staves of the Torah together, a mantle or protective case for the scroll, a breastplate that hangs atop the mantle, a pointer used for reading from the Torah called a yod, and Torah finials, which sit atop the scroll like a pair of crowns. Torah finials tell us so much about the time, the place, the culture of production. They convey local customs and broader trends, and they tell stories about Jewish communities across continents and time. Finials are really a sight to see in synagogue, especially when activated in ceremony. And because of the bells, there is the oral component to them, where you not only dazzle at their artistry, but hear them. They speak to us. These spectacular Torah finials were made in 1729 by Abraham Lopez de Oliveira, the earliest known Jewish silversmith to work in England. De Oliveira was born in Amsterdam in 1657 to Jewish refugees from Portugal who'd fled the Inquisition, along with a wave of Iberian Jews. He moved to London in the late 1600s and worked with the Spanish and Portuguese Bevis Mark Synagogue, London's oldest continuous synagogue still in use, where he cleaned and repaired silver until he started making his own. Jews in Western Europe were typically excluded from the artists' guilds until the 19th century when they gained civil rights. Despite this prohibition, de Oliveira was gradually able to practice his trade and became a prolific maker of Jewish ceremonial objects for prominent Sephardic and Ashkenazic synagogues throughout the city. De Oliveira is working in an early Rococo style and draws strongly on shapes and patterns from nature, like the shells here, a hallmark of the style. Every part of the gilded surface is decorated intricately. Even the staves, those poles at the bottom, are ornamented with engraved details. The crowns at the top allude to treating the Torah like royalty to signal its sacred presence. Abraham Lopez de Oliveira was also the son of a prominent rabbi in Amsterdam. And while there are scores of beautiful Torah finials made by Christian silversmiths, one cannot help but think about how de Oliveira might have designed his finials with a deeper and perhaps even deeply personal understanding of the rituals they're used to enact. Finials are actually called rimonim in Hebrew. Rimonim literally means pomegranates. The finials, I think, are directly related to this part of the Torah in which we discuss the garment of the great priest, the Kohen Gadol, in which the hem carries these rimonim, these bells and pomegranates. And I think the finials themselves are a way to show that this Torah has bells and whistles inside it. It's almost like an alarm. It's also an awakening. It's someone say like, listen, you have to like hear this incredible piece of wisdom that's right here. Listen to the sound. Look at to this beautiful art. Mm -hmm. 
Hidur mitzvah comes from the word hadur, hadar, pleasant. And the idea of hidur mitzvah actually comes from a verse in the Torah where the idea of beautifying the mitzvah or beautifying practice is a way of enjoying our devotion and not just getting it done. What is special about Torah ornaments and Torah finials is that they emphasize to us this idea that yes, Jewish culture and tradition is about the sacred text, it's about the word, but it's also crucially about art and beauty. Yeah.